everyone, and welcome to Connections for Life. I'm Ted Pete here with Cowboy uh, Chad. Uh, howdy, partners. Turn on the camera. Howdy, partners. Nice natty light hat, Chad. Thanks. I, got oh, just Jason, I, I wasn't serious. I KGA a while ago. That was not. That was not a real. What are comment. you doing, Joe? You're, I'm going to throw up. Not because I look funny, but because the camera made me motion sick. Cameras in season. Oh, that's it. Let's go. Yeah. Multiple screens. Where are we going? I don't know. I said Cameras in season coming on. Here he is. Let's go. <laughs> there's <laughs> our guest. <laughs> and there's our intro. I, I that hat uh, is, is so, it's so bad. It's amazing. I know. It's actually pretty durable. You you want to tell the story of where that came from? Is Kentucky Gas Association show, right? And we didn't have a booth yet. We had no, we had like nothing. We had a tablecloth. That was it at this time. And we ended up going to Wally World and buying a bunch of things to give away, like these cool <clears throat> Nerf guns that we got for, they were like $2.92. And like $80 guns. Yeah, they were, they, and we just happened to get up there and we rang them out. We didn't even realize it. We actually went back and got more because they rang up at like four bucks and they I were $80. <laughs> I do not. Lindsay sold that. I still have one. <laughs> I shoot. I think we should uh, get. Well, we also gave them out. We gave them out as uh, as like the prize for the show. But at the same time, we shopped for like we wanted a, a fish bowl for cards and Joe we just got a whole bunch of goofy stuff. Yeah, but we walked past this and this was also on sale for it was two dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> but there's the markdown tag. Might have been marked down off of that. So I, I just thought it was the purchase. Dollar. I, I think the funniest thing I just noticed was when you pulled the hat off to look at it, you went. That's because I can't see without glasses. And that, 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 and then when you put it back here, when you put it back on, your vision came back. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. How come you don't have glasses on? Huh? <laughs> can't hear either, okay. apparently. <laughs> He's deaf and That's, blind now. Why, why, why is it? I, I've always wondered this. Why is it that when people can't like hear something or see, like, like hear something, they squint. You ever notice that? And they're like, huh? huh? Yeah. Oh, that is fine. Why do you squint when you can't hear something? It doesn't help. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So how was your weekend, Chad? What'd you do? Uh, you just made me think about it. <laughs> um, I feel like I did stuff. Oh, I had a busy weekend. Um, Friday night, I can't remember. This is a disaster. For you me. went to a hockey game. Man, I know. Know. It's the highlights. Yeah. We don't need like the Saturday. Blow Saturday, blow. Uh, Saturday. Lindsay and I went and did some Christmas shopping, but then uh, Jeff, who you both know, his his father passed away like two weeks ago. So they had like a celebration of life party for him uh, that we went to, and then we went to Zoe's first CYO uh, basketball oh. game. Like Catholic youth organization, an in-house basketball game. She has seven girls on her team, four of which have never played basketball before. And then there's Zoe who played basketball up, like up until last year and another girl. And we beat this team 33 to three. And we were bad, bad. Like there was girls that there was, I have a video of a girl throwing two, three throw shots over her shoulder and hitting the backboard. It was incredible. The name of their team is the Sassy Shooters. All right, that's enough. I told you I had to <laughs> that's do enough. That. <laughs> and then I Joey was... and I went to the Blue Jackets game last night. And that <laughs> was on on TV. If you really I was, well, I sat in my legal seat. Yeah, really. Don't tell people. Oh, sorry. Blow us in. I paid to get in. <laughs> yeah, but well, I didn't think you snuck in. That would have been that hat on. Though. Did you wear that hat? Like, hold on. Hey, when hold we on. Go, I'm going to go around. You stand outside the building right here. All right. I'm going to push this door open when you get in. <laughs> three seconds before the alarm goes off. <laughs> get in the door now, 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 now. And when we go in January, you have to wear that hat. Mm. It looks like the Rangers. I think you should wear that, that hat off. all next week <laughs> at the sales meeting. If I could get it in my suitcase, I would. It just doesn't just flatten. wear it on the airplane. It doesn't flatten. Flatten. Could you imagine if I wore that on the airplane? If I pick you up from the airport and you're wearing that hat, I'll give you 30 cool points. I'll give you 30 cool points as well. It's just so you much work. 60 cool points out of this deal. Listen, if it was like one of those collapsible ones where you go and it would flatten down and then you could pop it back up. That's 100% collapsible. You paid $2.50. It won't even. <laughs> Drill a hole in it and tape it there and just loop it to your back. <laughs> the funny part is Chad is pushing on as hard as I can. All right, let's move on. on. These Sorry, just, that's gotten more mileage than it's needed. All right, what about you, Joe? What'd you do? I don't know. I didn't do anything. <laughs> I, uh, 
I um I don't know. I went to soccer. Um, oddly enough, um, we had a celebration of life for my grandfather who passed away recently. Yesterday was his birthday. Ooh. Um, so we got together for that. Um I yelled at my kids a bunch. And it's you're here on Monday with us. I feel like this weekend went so fast. Like Nine normally I'm kind of like, eh, you know, and I have some time. I didn't have any time this weekend to do anything. It was like Monday. So wow. just happy to be here. All right. All right. So I had a uh we don't care what you did, no one asked. No one did ask you. <laughs> so Chad, Chad, Chad took up your Chad took up your time. <laughs> I took up your time in confusion. With your hat. So, no, go ahead, Tony. So, ahead. you're going yeah, well, to get I was waiting for revoked when I started talking. So, um, no, we had basketball this weekend again. So, we've got, a, we've got a rec league going now through our program where we've got 257 kids in it. Um, that's uh, eight teams in three different divisions. And we had their evaluations this weekend. That was from 7 a.m. To, to 1 on Saturday. And then we did uh, – then I went and watched some of my high school players. What's up? Why the hell does anybody schedule anything at 7 a.m. on a Saturday? I it's scheduled not... it at 8 a.m. I, and the, I had to the reason I say seven. that is is because I got an alert yesterday for Macy's game next weekend on Saturday. Is it 7 a.m. in Syracuse? Meaning I have to leave the house at like – six to get there in time and i'm like it's saturday why why are we it's doing awful. this yeah i'm probably not going well i had mine at 8 a.m but i had to be there by seven to set up because i wanted to be done by noon one o'clock that's why i started early i gotta love i appreciate your 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 commitment to this program but i would have probably rolled in around 11 30 <laughs> and been like i hope it worked that's out that's because he's in business development yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> And then I got to watch some of my high school players play their first game. They actually played uh, a bunch of my guys from on the Elmira team played in Cicero North Syracuse team and oh, got CNS. waxed. <laughs> waxed. CNS, CNS is good. CNS, no, CNS has uh, they have three really really good players. One of them is this kid Andrew Benedict, who the, as a team. Shout, CNS out. Shout out to Andrew Benedict. Andrew Benedict, if you're watching, man, if you're class watching of 25, man. six foot two, two guard. Sophomore? Sophomore, You're he good. hit uh, as a team. Cicero hit oh, yeah. uh, sixteen threes. Holy crap! Oh, 16 oh were, they, threes. Were, were they playing the two three zone like Syracuse? No, no. So, so honestly, uh, they were shooting the light. It was twenty four to eight after the first quarter, and then they Elmira played them even the rest of the game, basically. But the twenty four to eight gap from the first quarter, they they didn't miss. In the first yeah. quarter, Andrew had 24 points and he had 18 of them on threes. Wow. So right. no, one, threes no one cares about three. this kid. He's not yeah. even on your team. He's on some other team. Yeah. Trying to get him on his team, though. You can tell. I uh, just he might, his, his coach and I have been talking a little bit. He might be coming down this way for spring basketball. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to point out that, like, my entire fantasy team, I started off, like, on fire. And now everybody on my team is broken. I just said, Joe, you know how I know your pain? Because I helped you draft your fantasy team, and my whole fantasy team is broken. Broken. <laughs> broken. I've lost three yeah, receivers, a quarterback. <laughs> mine hasn't dressed in like eight years. <laughs> <laughs> Much like DNP. you. DNP. Much like me. DNP. <laughs> All right, let's move on. We got enough. That's enough. That's like the right. longest it's intro. Time for... What time is it? I don't even know. I don't know. Bye, Chad. Uh, hang on. I'm trying to get to my background. I don't want to start before I get there. I'll just keep playing the imaginary drum. Yes, Back to gas. Yes, 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 yes. After 109 episodes, can't just get something recorded to play that when you need like. I mean, it's not as fun. Up our no, but I, on another just, real on another note, before you give your gas fact, I did text you guys over the 34 second video that you have to see in the basketball game that I was talking about. Maybe we'll put it in the our video too when I talk about it because it's pretty incredible. But anyway, no, because you would get listen, Girl, that would go viral. We would get unlucky uh, and that would go viral. It's it's we incredible. Would, the we more incredible insane. part is after you see her shoot it, she had nine points in that game. <laughs> can, can you blur out like her information and stuff? There's no information. <laughs> they no, but I don't want to alienate on. some kids. It's like listen, I we'll talk anyway, about it later. All right. This, we've already We're putting out a highlight one video. time for basketball. Uh, you, you lost two weeks of basketball talk. Basketball. Right. <laughs> Playing basketball. 
Gas facts. Sorry. I'm just waiting for Joe to talk. Whirl. Go. So, uh, yeah. So, guys, just this isn't the question, but I, I mentioned this months ago, and I was wondering if you guys remember, so I'm going to say it anyways. <laughs> More than blank million Americans use natural gas in their homes or business. Yes. 150 million. Admirable guess. 151 million. <laughs> Come on now! Come on! <laughs> You're the next contestant. Hey, Chad. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's 175. But anyways... So more than 175 million Americans use it uh, in their homes and business, and almost 70 percent of new homeowners indicate that they're preferred uh, they prefer natural gas for their homes. Right, so keep that in mind. 70 percent of new homeowners. Um, just so people that don't know, I'm going to read this. Is it like a little bit of a so you know what I'm talking about? Um, direct use uh, natural gas is when it's delivered directly into your home or business for heating and cooking. So not like when you're using natural gas to like generate electricity or something yeah. like that. That's not considered yeah, different. So direct use natural gas delivers blank more energy on the coldest day of the year than the electricity grid does on its hottest. Wait, one, go one more time. Dude, give me that question one more time. Average day uh, gas usage oh, versus highest electrical day. Direct use natural gas d- delivers blank more energy on the coldest day of the year than the electricity grid does on the hottest. So the, the, I'll give you the multiple choice. One and a half times, two times, two and a half times, or three times. Two and a half times. Two. It's three times. Wow. So, yeah. Just put that in perspective. Good old clean energy. Well, you know, it's so funny that I, you know, I, I, I wanted to kind of bring this up. Do you guys see what happened down in North Carolina with the guy with the? Uh, the Did they throw their hands up. North Carolina. Sorry. Come on, stand up. Take your shirt off. Twist it around your head. Spin like a helicopter. But no, I did not. Go ahead. No, me either. I don't even know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> and I think you should probably get some new choice of music. <laughs> Petey Pablo, man. That poor. is Petey Pablo. It's poor. <laughs> um. No. So in in North Carolina. Um, 40,000 people, I think it was 40,000. It may have been 400. No, it's 40,000. 40,000 people were out of electricity for, I don't even know if it's back on yet. Um, because somebody shot like with a gun, like up, uh, like electric yeah, substation. Or, yeah. or substation. I don't know. They shot something electric up. It doesn't matter. That's the point is it, it's, it's irrelevant. So irrelevant, 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 irrelevant. Okay, hey, Ted. Way to go. I don't know. It's early, and I'm trying to tell a story. I don't know really that much. Rails about. are off the tracks for sure. Yeah. Rails are off the tracks. So, anyways, I was thinking to myself, all of those people that are sitting around cold can't use anything. If they had natural natural gas, like it's not no big deal, right? Like at all, mm. right? It'll so I fun. just like, I just like to point out again, we did this fact a long time ago, but one in one electric services um is uh, experiences an outage so every single electric service at the point of a 12 month period experiences some outage of some sort and natural gas it's like one in 800 so like just put that in perspective for you and and, and that's all i have today <laughs> awesome that was i like um, that I, that's a good I'm one I, stuck I, on believe it or not though I, I talked to at that at the celebration of life, I ended up talking to one of Jeff's best friends who I've never met in the eight years, seven years I've lived here, whatever it is. Uh, he works for a huge company out here called Worthington Industries, who makes propane tanks. And we just, I said, "Are you getting?" And he's their five billion dollar company in propane tanks. And oh, I'm no, like, everybody leaves, beat up? everybody leaves propane alone. But he's like, "Are you getting beat up?" He's like, "Yeah," but he's like, "We're the, you know we're just facing the same stuff." And I kind of I kind of will get him on the show actually if I can. Yeah, but they're probably still selling record numbers. Or oh no, he said we've had it's been record record sales, like absolutely record sales. So it's just interesting. They're selling. They're selling. But I use some of those stats on them. It's great. The what the real ones are the ones you made up at that time. The ones I made up. I mean, they they're, they they got to be close. <laughs> I don't know if they do, buddy. <laughs> you self-admitted that you don't have a memory that lasts past when we press record. And now you're trying that. I never hey, said that. 
You know, you are. I don't think I remember saying that. You're hey, dangerous. Chad, did I ever tell you that that the uh, fountain in Las Vegas? <laughs> I ever tell you about that? I bet I, you don't even remember. I do remember Nicolata. that one. It Not took you, me a Chad. second. Not you, Chad. What play? What hotel though? I do. I know that. It's a mirage, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe you'll get it next time, Tony. <laughs> you just actually, you just actually brought that up, and then. Well, all right, we got. Colada was the only thing that I. Cared it took about. me a minute, though. It did take me a minute. Um, <laughs> let, let's go. Where we going? Right. So, who do we have on our show today, Chad? Um, we have Mr. Oh, Dan Rosinski. Uh, Dan has been in the industry since. 93 i believe we'll go through the whole thing a little bit 30 but, years but, almost yeah he's been a, he's been a real staple of the industry he was with perfection for 20 some odd years uh then went to to work for uh george fisher a little bit and now is with sense it uh member of the guild all kinds of stuff just a really good dude um go ahead joe you are you okay i was just thinking <laughs> about something um just a great guy. And, and I think one of the things he leaves us with at the end of this interview is, is one of the coolest parts. It was, it was a good question kind of off the cuff of, I think Joe asked it because it couldn't have been me or Ted, uh, but more or less, what, more or less, what you would suggest to, to a young salesperson coming oh, into, yeah. into the, to the game essentially. So <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Ted, you can do the rest now. Without further ado, <laughs> welcome to our show, Dan. Hello, Dan, and welcome to Connections for Life. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing good, Ted. How you doing? I uh, subpar. It's bad. You know, it's like the rest <laughs> of my life. Die for you for today. It actually. is Friday. It's Friday, so you got that going for you. That's that's oh, why it's water. subpar instead of just like you know really low below par. Here's the weird <laughs> part: uh, isn't subpar actually better than being no. over par? Like I don't know. <laughs> it depends on what game you're playing. Oh, yeah, it depends on the game you're playing. If you're par, you're good. I got it. I got it. This is already off the rails. Hello, Dan. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Welcome to the show. You Are you bringing us back in, back yeah. into the where we're supposed to be? The real world. He's putting, the, he's putting the, the the rails back on the track. Yeah, yeah. Good job, Daddy. I um I uh have been trying to get you to come on the show now for about twelve to eighteen months. So thank you for finally agreeing. I think we got oh, we got just big enough for you to be like, all right. I guess I'll like get, I'll throw them a bone. I'll throw them a bone and I'll come on. Um, no, I appreciate you having me. Um, you know, you must be getting to the bottom of the barrel if you're asking we are. me to we join are. you. <laughs> we we're, going, are. we're going alphabetical. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, in, in all seriousness, uh, we'll, we'll start to where we start. Everyone else, I've said that as many times as Ted has said. Uh, what do you say? Without further ado. Without further ado. Um, just Dan, I know you've been in the industry for a long time. Um, and I just kind of, how did you get your start in the gas industry? And, and did you think, you know, coming into it initially, you'd still be doing it, you know, as long as you have been? Um, no, it's, um, it's, it's actually turned out to, to be a, a pretty good career for me next year will be 30 years for me in the industry. I started in, in January of 93 and, um, when he was nine years old. <laughs> I, I I wish that was the case, but um, you know, I I I was working with this guy right out of college. We worked for a company that made automatic labeling equipment, huh. and you know, we sold into a variety of different industries and stuff. And he ended up going over to Perfection, what's now Honeywell, um, and they were, believe it or not, they were they were going with a direct sales team um, from using reps for the for the plumbing business. So um, they had a couple openings. He told me he really liked it there. So I ended up uh, going to work there in January of '93 and. I right in the there. sales, Dan. Right, jumped right in the sales too, right? Or yeah, no? yeah. Yeah, but we it, it was kind of a, a a weird entry into the utility market because I started out working with uh plumbing companies and <laughs> Chad, I don't know if you remember this, but um in Ohio where I live, the the plumbers were responsible for putting in the service line i do remember because even even up until i when i came to upsco eight and a half nine years ago there was still some 
people that would call us for like a Columbia gas meter setting because they still thought they had the supply. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Crazy. So, yeah. You know, we would, That's we interesting. Would sell to these, all, all these, uh, you know, plumbing supply houses <laughs> through Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky area. Yeah. Um, we would sell risers and, and, you know, other, other fittings and so forth to them. And then, you know, since then the utilities have taken ownership of the service lines, but um, that's kind of how I started out. And then, you know, took a, a, a couple of different roles within perfection. Um, I, I, I worked with UPSCO. They were, they were our rep for a number of years while I was there. Um, I, I dealt with Dan Page actually. <laughs> Who's your owner there, or one of the owners there at Upsco, and sure. and we covered upstate New York. I was. How was that experience? That was that the was that the mid nineties exactly early mid nineties for us. I assume so. We, we don't have enough time for that. <laughs> um, you know, we Dan and I did a a lot of really great stuff, and I learned a lot from Dan. Um, I remember days when when you know I would meet him up in Rochester, New York, and we'd take off for the week. And, you know, I'd come back to 14 inches of snow on my car. <laughs> and, and Dan would dump me off and say, see you later. <laughs> You'll be fine. Dig your, yourself out of there. So That's um, amazing. So you yeah. said you said you covered Kentucky. And one of my questions I kind of told you when we, you know, before we talked to this was, the difference in sales from 1993 to 2023 soon, right? That's it's yeah. essentially 30 years almost yeah. that you've been doing this. I can't imagine in 1993 going to somewhere in Kentucky, some of the places that I have to go to, and being told to find that place without an, without an address or a GPS. And I think that's super impressive to me. I know it sounds weird, but hey, <laughs> small thing. No, you're you're <laughs> you're exactly right. I mean, the technology is you know, certainly helped. I, you know, when we talked earlier, you know, when, when we first started out, I didn't, we didn't have cell phones. You had a, it was much had simpler. AT, it seems like AT it was much AT simpler. Card and uh, briefcase. So you, if somebody wanted to complain by in writing, they had to mail you something <laughs> or, fa or fax it. <laughs> exactly. You got a lot less complaints. Yes, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, we Go had those little, read map books and and you know I, I i thought about that a lot about you know how did i manage back then and you didn't you know, know any better well a lot of what a lot of what you would do is when you were talking to the you know the customer that you're setting up the appointment with you'd say okay you know i'm going to be coming in on i-75 right. what exit do i get off with and where do i go to get and i'm going to be there between 12 and 2 God, i i remember working at, <laughs> i remember working at liberty coding and doing sales and i was young and i went back out in the plant but i was like 20 and i must have taken 15 calls a day of truck drivers trying to figure out how to get there so that does resonate pretty well that was the late yeah. 90s too. you see the big yeah. oak you're gonna make a left at that tree you're gonna go three miles with your green car at the red barn <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's different. I mean, even when I started off in sales, which wasn't 30 years ago, but um, you know, it was the same situation. Like I was I get on the road and I remember just when MapQuest first came about, like that was like revolutionary where you could yes. sprint where you were going and and you still got lost every time. But you know, I, I think it's funny now to, to think about that because you know, just the other day I was driving somewhere and I had I, my ways just wasn't functioning, right? It just wasn't working properly for about six and a half seconds. <laughs> and I flipped out. <laughs> you know, throws, this throws thing out. never works. It's you know, I lost my mind. You know, so put it in really, really to put it in perspective. I guess that the question I have is, um, you know, like just going back to Dan. We've all, you know, I've been with Dan here for twelve years. Chad has been what, almost nine. That's Teddy's been four. Um, we've all had our experiences with him. Is there one that like stands out for you? Um, that's just like, man, like that's the iconic Dan moment that you, that, and there may not be, I just thought, I, 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 I know there probably is. <laughs> there, there, you there's might not be able to talk about them either. Probably. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, there, there, there's several that come to mind, but you know, I remember one time, um, we were traveling with Jim B, Dan and I were, you know, yeah. and, um, you know, Jim, if you guys knew Jim at all, he, you know, Jumbo, he was uh, legendary, and uh, I remember one night we were out. We we had some customers out to dinner, and then the customers left, and Dan and Jumbo and I stayed in the bar till all hours of the night. And no. the next morning, we, we were obviously a little a little rough around the edges. <laughs> 
and we had about an hour drive over to Rochester. We were gonna we were gonna go uh, have lunch with a customer, and we we sat down, and Jumbo immediately ordered a twenty two ounce beer. Now this, <laughs> you know, this is a long time ago, so people were drinking it like you know. Jumbo ordered a twenty two ounce beer before the customers got there, and it was done by the time they got there. <laughs> And he ordered another one. So, you know, just a little <laughs> hole in the dog. So, you know, that that kind of came to mind. The question is, did you get one? Uh, I did not. I was <laughs> I, I behaved myself. He was still trying to pull it together. He was, he was recovering from being in a Dan Pajak phrase, overserved the night. Yes, you're overserved. I, you're yeah. overserved. We were all overserved. So, so yeah. But, so 20 years of perfection, um, you know, various roles and things like that. Um it's you know, I've been here for 12 and I can't imagine leaving, but after 20 years, how did you decide that that was, you know, the end of that chapter and you were going to try to move into something different? Yeah, that, you know, it was funny because perfection, when I first started there, it was, uh, it had just been sold by the, by the family, the Jacobsons owned it. It was privately held and they had sold it to American meter. Um, American Meter owned it for, you know, 15 of the 20 years that I was there, and they pretty much left us alone. They didn't, you know, they had their business, we had ours, we were both in the gas industry, but, um, you know, they pretty much left us alone. And then um, it ended up getting sold to private equity, um, you know, private equity firms. I'm not going to give you the names if somebody wants to look them up. There were, Google actually, it. <laughs> they, were, they were sold twice to private equity firms. And, you know, I, I remember the one firm, uh, their their motto was buy, improve, and sell. Um, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of improvement that I saw. Um, <laughs> you know, they, 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 sell, huh? they really um, kind of focused on just, cutting things down, reducing staff, reducing inventory, you know, making it look very profitable and attractive. So and that was kind of my cue that, you know, they, they, they lost sight of, uh, you know, what's important. Let's face it. You guys do a great job. If you take care of your customers, they're going to take care of you. They're going to give you their business if you treat them well. So yeah. um, we kind of lost sight of that at perfection. And uh, that was when I, Kind of thought it was time to leave. What was your What was your title there when you left? Uh, I was a uh, I was the uh, Eastern Regional Sales Manager, so I had kind of everything east of the Mississippi with you know guys in territories and stuff. So, so you always I mean, yeah yeah yep. I, so. It was a it was a great company when I started, and you know I've got a lot of good memories of of working there. So. Sure. So left perfection went to George Fisher uh, was my next step is uh, I went there as their national sales manager and uh, spent almost six years there. Um, and that's, uh, you know, they're obviously a major, major player in the gas industry with a, a variety of different product lines. So a little bit. Yeah, a little little bit. bit. <laughs> from, yeah. from George that's Fisher. Yeah. And then you uh, you've now moved on to where? I'm I'm at Sensit Technologies now, which um, yeah. you know is a a pretty big leap um, from the pipe and fittings side of things into more of a a technology side of things. With with you know we're in well, now you're uh, probably just crapping on all the people with the pipe and fittings that are having. Well, leaks. that's what I always tell people is you know <laughs> now I work for a company that finds leaks, so I can go out and find all the the, the leaking fittings that I sold. <laughs> you're going you're going full circle in the industry. Right? <laughs> that's right. He knows what about that, but it, he had a plan a the whole show. time. Yeah, that is he a good. A that's a really good sales plan. Was that a twenty? <laughs> that was a twenty-five year business plan, huh? Sell a bunch of stuff that's exactly. gonna leak and then go work for the place that's going to find those leaks, and I know where <laughs> they are. That's right. That's right. Hey, that's right. Just before we move too far forward, I had I did have one question that came up. You said that when you ended up at Perfection, it was a friend of yours that kind of got you into there. Did he remain at the company with you a long no, time? No, no, he he left probably. Oh, I guess may, he might have been there 10 years, something oh, no. like that. He That's actually, good run. yeah, no, he um, he was a great guy. John Hanf was his name, and he's uh, 
I, I think he works for a, a, a rubber company. He was an electrical engineer. Um, he, he ended up, he actually moved inside and was our inside sales manager when I was at Perfection. So he spent, you know, four or five years outside and then moved inside and ran the inside a, sales and customer yeah, service. That's, different, that's not a logical transgression. Yeah, that's something. Like, I couldn't imagine somebody being like, hey, you have to go to the office now from eight to five. Every day. <laughs> and, uh, right. um, but great. no, with, with Sensit, what do you do exactly now for them? And, um, you know, kind of like, how's it going? Yeah, it's, it's great. Um, you know, we're a small company. We are focused on the right things. Um, we're in leak detection and leak survey equipment um you know you've you've seen a lot of uh interest around uh fugitive emissions and methane emissions yep. so we've got we've got some fixed point um products too um but but it's it's really a great company and i know you had scott kleppy on the I show was just gonna before. Say, yeah. um scott's, Literally scott's uh, say. been a great leader for the company and built the company with the right attitude and mentality so um i i really like it here it was you know a, bi a big departure from the the pipe and fitting side of things because we deal with a lot of um you know a, a different group you know, it's a different group. It's a kind yeah. of a little bit of a different sales process. And, and it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of technology to it. So super, super question. You think the sales process is, I don't want to say harder, maybe longer or shorter than pipe and fittings uh, compared to this. Um, yeah, I would say it's, you know, is, is we, you know, we've got a couple new instruments and, and, you know, in, in New York, where where you know UPS goes at, um, the state has to actually approve. Oh, really? The instruments oh. were used by the utilities. Oh, I have no idea. That's you probably have to pay for that service too. I'm sure. Uh, I I don't know, but it has to be sponsored by a utility company, and um, wow. you know, so it's it's you know, whereas when you're selling butt fusion fittings yeah, or yeah. electro fusion fittings that have been in the industry, it's not really the new technology. So I, I wouldn't say it's harder. It's just different. It's different. a different process. That's yeah. pretty cool. So yeah. speak, speaking of new technology, what's kind of cool and new coming out of sense anything you want to talk about? Yeah, we've got some really great stuff. Um, we, we just introduced our third generation of handheld CGI, the, the G3, um, we, we've introduced that to about four or five companies since about mid year this year was when we released it. Um, and, and so far it's working great. It's got, you know, a lot of, uh, features on it for compliance, uh, data logging and GPS. Uh, Stu, I'm so going to break this down and ask a really stupid question, but will you tell, because I, there's probably uh, that all five people that watch our show. <laughs> what does C what does CGI mean and how does it work? If you wouldn't combustible mind. ten seconds, ten cent more. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll try to keep it short. Uh, CGI is combustible gas detector, so it's you know our our handheld units we can configure them in a variety of different ways um, where they can detect explosive gases, uh, carbon monoxide, oxygen. H2S, hydrogen sulfide, that's found a, around a lot of production facilities and stuff like that. Uh, hydrogen cyanide, we sell a lot into the fire uh, industry um, because those guys show up on scene when there's leak calls. So, um, so that we've got that. Uh, we've got a, a new, um, you know, the probably one of the biggest advances in leak technology is uh, our laser-based products. Um, we've got a handheld laser that that a lot of utilities throughout the United States are equipping their uh, first responders with so that they can detect gas uh, from about 100 feet away. Wow. That's, we've oh, seen wow. that That's cool. before. We remember yeah, uh, we National seen. Grid, I think, was using something. Yeah, Adam. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't Adam. Adam. He was there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's 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 a couple instruments out there. You know, we've got we've got two that are handheld laser gas detectors so you know when when somebody gets a leak call and and their first responder shows up to a house they can scan the outside awesome. of the house they can 
shoot the laser, it, it'll go through windows as long as they don't have a reflective coating on them um, and see if there's gas inside the house, keeps the employee away from, you know, a potentially dangerous area and um, think, pretty I cool. Think, pretty cool. They get, they get utilized a lot too, like in inspections and like bridge crossings and things like exactly. that. Exactly. You don't have to put a guy in a bucket up there to be able to yep. you know, sense it from the ground. So Exactly. Um, in big warehouses, you know, you don't have to get on a lift yeah. to check piping. It's yeah, it's really cool technology. So we've got that, and then uh, we're we're in the process of introducing a uh, what we call our PMD two, which is a portable methane detector, and that's used more for leak survey. It's got the you know GPS and data oh, logging, cool. so. So, you know, you can import those files into your mapping software. So, is that, is that well, kind of like, is that kind of like what they've, they're putting on the car, the technologies they're putting on cars? Like yeah, on we, we have a vehicle based uh, version as well that's open path laser and does, you know, the GPS recording and, and so forth. So, that's really good. Yeah. Dan, where is all your stuff manufactured? Is it done at a facility, like at one facility or? It is, yeah. Valparaiso, Indiana is our headquarters, um, which is kind of northwestern Indiana, about an hour south of Chicago. Um, you know, what's really cool. Is... Yeah, yeah well, that's right. Valpo University, right. Yeah. Um, what's what's really great is we we build pretty much everything we make at that facility. I mean, we, we build our own circuit boards. We, you know, build our own rechargeable batteries, stuff like that. We, we really do that all in house. How many total employees are at Sunset? Uh, I think we're up to about 150. Total. Wow. So about yeah. the same as us, give or take. Yeah. Is that how big you guys are now? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Great. At least that's what we tell people. <laughs> there's only uh, there's only six of us actually. there's actually just us three but, uh, <laughs> we've made up the entire organization <laughs> yeah so, um dan i guess like in the in your career i mean you really only had three jobs in this industry right like three companies you work for kind of yeah what, what's been like your favorite moment man like what's been the thing that's like you're you know when you when you when you're when it's all done and said and done and the curtains kind of closes and you retire and move off into the sunset, what, what like achievement do you think right now? It's is clearly your, this interview. Is your favorite? Oh, absolutely, this is the <laughs> highlight of my career. Besides this interview. Oh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, now you're making it tough. Um, no, you know, I, I tell you, this is it's it's a small industry. The gas, you know, utility industry is a small industry. Um, I've made a lot of friends, both, you know, with uh, other suppliers, um, customers, you know, uh, a, a lot of those friends are starting to retire, you know, after, um, you know, after 30 years, you see a lot of a lot of these guys are, you know, they're getting to the end of their careers. I still have two kids in college, so you I'm going to have to keep working for a few more, but um you know, it's it's really there, and and I think anybody that's you know, you guys have obviously made um, a lot of a lot of friends and built relationships in the industry. Um, you know, it's it's a cool industry. There's a lot of a lot of really great people that you know. I know I've got guys that I you know they've retired and I still stay in touch with. So it is um, that's, that's probably the highlight is just the relationships that I've built with people. I think it's. I'll, it's, I'll, I'll, say, I'll tell you that's my favorite. Uh, my favorite part of it being the newbie, you know, still four years in is is you know they said it the first day I got here, like you know this industry is so small, and it doesn't seem that way, but it really is yeah. that, that you will genuinely build relationships and friendships that will last your lifetime, and mm -hmm. and that is that is that's such a crowning achievement. That he's still looking yeah. for one. So. I haven't found one yet. <laughs> I haven't found one yet. It's only been four years, so. Um, yeah. Is my internet better, Joe? Seems to be. I like, can hear you. Good. It went, uh, it went crazy. You know, and, and you act like you, it's so funny. Your internet, you'd think you would live in like the a middle of a valley in the middle of nowhere. You live in Columbus, <laughs> Ohio. Like, get tell Columbus to get their, you know, their stuff together, Coops. Come on. <laughs> I probably should, I'm going to have to pay the bill. <laughs> you got dialed yeah. Chad actually doesn't even have internet at his house. He's stealing <laughs> I, I'm That's using my neighbors, probably. actually. <laughs> I'm using his phone as a hotspot. 
Go ahead, Kuba. What were you going to say? Uh, you know, it's probably one of our last questions, though, but we're all part of the Guild of Ancient. Well, sorry, Teddy, I didn't mean to get bring all in there. And sorry, Salt. the Guild of the Guild of Ancient Supplers. And I know you're involved in a in a ton of different organizations, like we are, and things like that. But what what's that mean to you, especially the the Guild? We work. Joe and I are both fairly yeah. fairly young to it, and and looking forward to a lot of stuff. But why don't you just fill us? Yeah, in? no, I the the Guild is uh, it's a really good organization, and um, we've got a, a really good leadership team. In fact. Scott Kleppy was was the head of it for uh, quite some time. And, um, you know, it's it's a group of um, suppliers to the gas industry. And, you know, again, kind of back to the relationships and friendships and camaraderie that we have, you know, it's you have to be invited to join the guild. You have to meet some certain criteria, you know, number of years. It doesn't mean. So number of years, yeah, ten years in the industry. The one of them, but um, you know, it's 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 cool because you know we we get together at large conferences and stuff, and um, you know, it it gives us a chance to to meet with our colleagues and you know just get to know them on a personal level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that's really cool about it is um. You know, I don't think we really have really identified this, but many of the guests that we've had on our show have been members. And we mm -hmm. don't always talk about it because it's not something that I don't know. It's it's oddly kind of enough, it's not talked about that much. It's kind of something that I think was always kind of looked at as like the secret organization. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It was never like. Yeah. And I know that yeah. the, the new leadership group is is trying to change that 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 appearance and trying to be more engaged. <clears throat> Um, there's some amazing people on there. I, I hope to have more members to come on. I'd hope to talk about it a little bit more. Um, as Chad said, we, we still have our new car smell, so we don't even know. What's going on. <laughs> um, we're still trying to figure it out, but, um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to what that means. And, and I know that, you know, for us, it's being just getting in some of the people that have been in a long time speak so highly of the, the organization and what it's done. So we're really looking forward to make an impact on that, as I'm sure you were when you started. So, yeah, you know, I, I think it's great. You know, it says it says a lot about you guys to get invited to the guild and not everybody is given the opportunity to join. You know, like you, have to be, you have to be yeah. nominated by one of your peers. Um, and unlike and that, you go to uh, <laughs> <laughs> Poor Ted. Uh, and then, and then you, you got to put in a couple more years, yeah. Ted. Yeah, a but, few more. Maybe make a relationship or two. You'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's it says a lot that you get recognized by your peers for being somebody of you know good character and and that provides uh, the right attitude and you know the right um, you know efforts to the gas industry to make it safer. So. Um, you know, I'm, I, we're, we're glad to have you guys as members and, and, uh, you know, most people will see the guild at, uh, you know, like the AGA and stuff like that, where they give, you know, it's a, it's a charitable organization too. So we provide, um, scholarships, you know, scholarships to, to people that are going to attend, you know, a gas specific trade school or, um, you know, charities that they support, you know, whoever the, uh, you know, person that's in charge of AGA or SGA or whatever, they'll, they'll give uh, money to them to support a charity of their choice. So, you know, it's a, a very charitable organization too. I have maybe one more question and then we can let you get back to trying to sell stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, after 30 years of being in sales, Right. It's not like you were in production and then operations. I mean, you've literally been rooted in sales for primarily your whole career. Yeah. Um, is there any advice that you could give to somebody that's coming on board or that's just moving into sales or is interested in going into sales? Um, what kind of like stage? Would, what, yeah, like Teddy. What kind of stage wisdom would you like maybe impart on that person? Um, you know, I would say um, the biggest thing that you, uh, to do in sales is, is, you know, the biggest thing is your reputation, right? Um, you know, keep your word. If you tell somebody you're going to do something, then do it. If, if you can't do that, tell them why you can't do it. Don't, don't just Despair. tell somebody something and then oh. never circle back and, and complete, you know, if something, you know, something derails that, then, then, you know, 
tell that person why you weren't able to get that done. But, um, you know, really, I think part of the reason that I, I feel I've been successful in sales is I keep mm -hmm. my word to people. If I say I'm going to call, I call. If if I say I'm going to be there, I'm, I, I, I get there. So, um, you know, just keep your word and, and you know, just as a customer like like they're your boss and uh they pay your paycheck and uh you'll you'll do well i think well, Such I, awesome as it is practical advice right there i uh, just go ahead Teddy. sorry no, yeah that 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 is uh that's something that many people don't get about sales you and... write that down <laughs> <laughs> did you just set and started oh we're recording this you can watch Let's it see yeah <laughs> you're walking the wrong way i'm headed to your house chad i'll see you this weekend bud. <laughs> so, there's no walking? internet there no worry <laughs> <laughs> um, so dan i just want to say thanks like i mean i've i've known you a bit of time here and my time in the industry and i i know that's all of that i everybody's always talked super highly of you. And it was one of the reasons that we all, we, we wanted to get you on this show is that I think that um, I think sometimes you, you guys that are a little bit older and been in the industry a long time, don't give yourselves enough credit for being pioneers and being able to give yourself the uh, pat on the back for, for breaking through and doing what you have. Much of the things that you guys have done over the course of the last 30 years um, is paving the way for us to be successful and, and, no one takes enough credit and 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 really thinks sure. about that. You think about the people that came before you that helped you, but you never put right. yourself in that position. So I just want to say thank you for that. Thank you for being on our show. And um, if there's anything else that you can ever impart to help Teddy out, maybe build some relationships. I know he's willing to listen. In like another six years, he's going to need an invite to the guild. <laughs> yeah. yeah, write that down. Make a note. <laughs> we can help. but uh but that's that's it from us man i i really do appreciate you being here and i'm um, looking forward i know trade show season starts up and we always share that same space so we'll be saying yeah. sooner, yeah. sooner rather than later and have a happy holidays and a merry christmas i can't believe it's almost christmas and i know hitting I the know. reset button on another year another Great. one thank you joe and and ted and chad i i appreciate you inviting me on and um, you guys, uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd like to also thank you guys for putting the show on. Um, it is awesome. When, when, when everybody was locked down for COVID, um, you know, I got so much enjoyment listening to you guys interviewing people. Um, you know, it, it, you know, we, we, we lost that ability to go be in front of customers and have those interactions. We've all gotten better at this live streaming meeting, yeah, yeah. yeah. stuff like that. But, um, you know, you guys did a great job and, and, you know, I'm glad that you're continuing doing this and, uh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah. We, uh, we, we just hopefully were able to create a little bit of normalcy for people in a really unnormal time. And that was kind of part of what we were trying to do. And, to be honest with you, it was completely self-serving. We were losing our minds. We had no idea what to do. With <laughs> to I mean, so, uh, so it was, it was just funny. as cathartic for us as it was for maybe other people. So, um, yeah. thanks for your kind words. We, we, we appreciate you watching. Um, that's two people now, guys. That's two people. And, uh, one more, uh, one more. We'll, we'll get, we'll be able to send them a knife, a knife set for a Christmas present. <laughs> yeah. I would like to point out though, as I say goodbye and thank you, Dan, that, uh, he said your name last, Chad. Thanks, fellas. <laughs> I got to change my background. Oh, boy. Dan, thank you so much for joining us on Connections for Life. I caught both these guys with their hats off, and I had to take advantage of the opportunity. We really, really appreciate you joining us. I enjoyed that immensely. My favorite Especially thing the part is he about went, the advice for the went, young salesman. He went, oh, boy. <laughs> and then Chad that that camera. <laughs> oh. oh, no, Adam's calling. Are you going to hit record now? I'm did. popular today. We're recording right now. Oh, are, are what, you, what are you, Chad Almighty? Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, just, I was trying to get rid of the gas back background, and clearly, I on this. I, I didn't. I, I didn't mean to hijack your exit to Rosinski's interview, but that was funny. Um, Dan, <laughs> thanks for <laughs> complaining. It was great. You're like, you're the one who's got to hit record. Boom. Got gotcha. <laughs> no, it was just funny. <laughs> gotcha. It was just Chad going, oh boy. Oh boy. oh boy. I was not ready at all. Anyways, no, Dan, thanks for coming on. I've only been chasing you around since episode seven. Um, <laughs> come on. 
<laughs> I think I was actually trying Way to, to get complete him on. the mission. I was trying to get him on when he was still at George Fisher. <laughs> 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 no, all kidding aside, uh, Dan's awesome. I I've gotten to know him um, over the last few years more so than than uh, than I had in the early part of my career, and um, you know, it's just uh, it's nice to be able to see people at that point in their career and th- what they've transitioned through, and you know, um, that they're still loving the industry, loving their job, and still super engaged in what's going on. So, um, Dan, thanks for coming on. We'll see you soon, I'm sure. Do um, you guys have anything else you'd like to add? No, Good job. <laughs> Chad, you no, I had to. Dad. Well, I had to do the intro, and I think I, I spilled nailed my beans. It. I no, I didn't nail it. I just spilled my beans. Like I, it, Dan's awesome. He's been around a long, long time in our industry, and he started when he nine, started when he's nine years old. He started when I was thirteen. Started when I was fifteen. <laughs> what do you say? Thanks. What do you say? In ninety three. Yeah. Yeah, January ninety three. He said, "Yeah, I was nine. Yeah. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Mentally. Not figuratively. If people didn't know, you would definitely be perceived as the oldest person on the show. Probably. Take your hat off. Look at that. Now here, time. I'll say this, though. <laughs> I lost my hat. <laughs> nice collar. On the, on the rodeo? Yeah, you like that one? Yeah, there? yeah, there you go. No, but the I say it all the time. Like you know, when I was sixteen, buying beer for everybody without getting carded, it was no, <laughs> it was great. It's awesome, uh, right? It's that when I hit, no, no, no. Listen, let me finish. When I hit thirty, all of a sudden I'd go to places and people are like, "Oh, we're about the same age, right?" I'm like, "I don't know how old are you." They're like forty. I'm like, "No, you're ten years older than me." They're like, "Well, you look the same age as me," and I'm like, Thanks. "Thank you." Yeah, <laughs> but when I, I don't have a beard, I look twenty five. It wasn't that he bad. can't grow a beard. It's it's everything but your facial hair. I know I cannot grow facial hair. Can you can you not shave for like six weeks and let's just see what that looks let's like? See what happens. There if you go. go, listen. If you go, there, there, there you go. There you go. Right no, there. how long is that? That is uh, Wednesday. Yeah, oh, okay. that's incredible see, though. You got to you can do that. You probably get like that one like weird long man. Oh, straggly hair. That's if you go like eight weeks without shaving, I'll shave my beard off. I can't, I can't make a chin strap. You know how people who can't get a beard can do a yeah. chin strap? Yeah. I can't do a chin strap. I get like, I will neck beard. I'll, I'll, I'll neck beard please, you. Please, please do that. That's my Christmas. I will just out neck beard you. And then and you I'll, need to just like remember brown for a mustache. It'll look like Mr. Splinter's facial hair. <laughs> you know how they tried to I, give Mr. Splinter? I would Splinter? pay so much money for that. Master Splinter. Yeah, Master Splinter. All right, enough. What do we do with detail? We're supposed to do news articles and stuff. We're not doing any news articles. Uh, no, we're, we're gonna do. Anything. We're gonna do one. Oh, we're not. One? Okay. Yeah. All You're right. pulling it up right now. You don't have it. I just. Nobody. I didn't. I just didn't have it. Go to the bathroom. I don't while you read it. I'll talk. I'll give you a topic. Talk <laughs> to yourself. I'm a little bit clumped. No, I just. I guess the one thing I was just gonna bring up is I posted it last week. But like every single day, if you just go into to, oh, to Google or book. Microsoft or Bing or whatever you use, whatever search engine Nobody uses Bing, let's be honest. I do. That's what I got. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I ended up there, but that's just what comes up when I hit <laughs> Bing. So that's what I have. Um, I do have Bing. I swear to God. So, uh, but every single article when you type in natural gas utility news is about the increased price of. Of, yeah, uh, about oh the increase here. Twenty five percent. I read right, them all. It was crazy. It's crazy. So, like, I'll go. Let me see if I can find them. Wherever I put them, you guys can say something in the meantime. Uh, I'll tell you what's funny. So I've always been on the budget. Mike, hold on, hold on. Let me finish my. Never story. mind. You can't talk, talk now. Never mind. Mind. Don't talk amongst yourself anymore. No, I found. I uh, you... stop talking about your budget. I'm going to have Brianna go put a clip together of all the times you talked about your budget. What budget? His his electric budget and his gas budget. It's the only way he relates. You should let him talk. Go ahead, Tim. Thank you. So I've always kept it at a certain thing. And they always try to cancel it at the end of the year because they give me 40 bucks back, right? All right? And every year I fight with them and make them put it back to where I want it so I don't owe them any money because one year, five years ago, whatever, they were like, oh, you owe us $1,400. Taking that out of your account, automatic withdrawal. And I was like, I don't like that. So this year. <laughs> I didn't like that. Yeah. No, thank you. I don't think anybody would. 
Yeah. <laughs> so this year they did it and they lowered it from three fifteen to two hundred and forty one dollars or something, right? I said, I don't know how you guys do math. I said, but you owed me forty bucks at the end of the year, <laughs> and now you lowered my budget. You know, seventy five dollars every month. So one month goes by before I was able to call them and set it right. After the one month ago, <laughs> I owed them 88 bucks. <laughs> and I was like, why would you? So I called and I said, why? I did this last week. I go, why would you lower my budget to that? And they're like, well, the usage said, and I go, you're a liar. <laughs> because I've got every bill stapled right there in that file. Is your, is your meter in your house? Yes. Like and I send them like mine every month and then they read it every other month. Yeah. So every month, one month I read it, one month they read it. So there's never an estimate. All right. And they Apparently end up risk. owing me 40 bucks at the end my, of the year. My gas meter's in my basement still. So it. mine is for now, but they're coming to take it out this summer. Like the whole did you project. Put, did, you put, did you put Trenton wax on it? Listen, sure it's road dude, I, I wish I'm going to take a picture and send it to you guys of it's mine. Like meter it, set's performing badly. Oh my God. It's an 11 inch center line meter bar. With a, with gooseneck offset swivels that are like that, they go like this, like, and they go like this, <laughs> and they're like two turns in them. It's horrific. It's rusted to death with a brand new meter on it. Mine had one coming out of the side of it on that went outside to a to a off of our side of it. You know what I mean? That we pay for going out to my backyard to a natural gas grill. Oh, All that's right? cool. So I had them cut it off and tap Why? it because it turned into my uh, tankless hot water feed. Oh. And I the gas grill out back, I want gone because it's ugly. Is it built in? It, 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 yes, but it's ugly. How did we get here? Uh, My budget. That's why Joe doesn't want us to go there. That's why. Never mind. I take it. Dad, you're not allowed to talk about your budget. Honey. And my budget. My budget. <laughs> why are you even budgeting if you're reading it every month? Yeah. Why, every why other is month. budget? But they read it every month. So what's the difference? I've, because they <laughs> it holds them accountable. And I know how much sounds like you it. could it really just pay like the it. actual amount, genius. Doesn't work like that with them. It works for everybody else. In really? No, it doesn't. Works for me. Ask everybody who hates nice sex. Everybody hate listen, anybody hates anything that you sends you a bill. <laughs> like it doesn't matter what it is. It could be eight dollars. You're like, mm, got the eight dollar bill again every time. How do we get here? I don't know. That's why I tell you not to let him talk about some stuff. I don't like you. I'm done talking to you. Anyway, Finish the show. I can't. You got control. No, um, it. Now I'm mad. Um, I, what I was trying to say was these are the articles that I pulled. Was it like Thursday or Friday of last week? Um, these are the titles of the news articles. One on heels of gas hike, Excel Energy Colorado seeks bump in electric rates. Two, WEC ratepayers to see double-digit bump as even even as regulators from trim utility profits. UGI to pass on higher natural gas uh, gas gas cost to customers. PSC approves interim natural gas rates, tries to lessen sticker shock. Natural gas companies in West Virginia granted interim rate increases. Could oil-rich Alaska be forced to import natural gas? Two utilities are looking into that. What higher natural gas prices mean for Connecticut's clean energy push? Electricity and gas bills in Nevada rising in 2023. Mountaineer gas granted 15% rate hike. Spire gas rate hike goes into effect Tuesday. Those are just the, like the, how many articles I just read titles off of like one page of natural gas utility news. I wish we could show the uh, email that we sent out last week that like, remember I sent the one of the, the gas meter set that New York put out and then you sent the, yeah. I wish we could talk about that because that makes me angry. I see them every day. Like they're like so. If you go on uh, like Twitter or something, yeah. like they're like they're constantly like blasting those out there. Constantly, but it's such incorrect information. It's literally like, hey, natural gas is really bad for you and inefficient. Go to electricity where it's way more efficient and costs less money. It's, and like, it's almost like natural gas. You're gonna die. It's like it's literally, and, and I'm like New York State. Why are you putting that out? And we're paying for this with our tax money. And what was and, the I gotta see if I could find it. Like who there there was a group that um that funds that. Freemasons. <laughs> oh. Freemasons. What kind of guess what Knights that? of Columbus. I don't know. I'm just he said there was a group that funds it. Knights of Columbus. The Moose Lodge. 
Oh my god. <laughs> the IBW. And what what are we can we be done now? No, this is important. It's important, he said. I'm going to my deleted items to find this thing. That's what I'm trying to do. So. I'm gonna check my email. If so let's talk amongst <laughs> ourselves. Yeah, tell us about your utility. Huh? I don't know. I don't Lindsay pays the bills. <laughs> that has no clue. Well, it's also weird in Ohio for electricity. You have to buy if you buy it from the energy company, you absolutely get get hosed because you pay more. You have to go through the people that buy it in bulk and resell the electricity, essentially. So we don't even buy our electricity from the power source. It actually goes through a distributor that buys extra electricity. Interesting. So they What's have ones that go here? around up here and like brokers that try to like, you know, like Ambit Energy is one of the Yeah, that's the same thing. But you have in Ohio, you have to go through them for the most part. Or you you can't even get a decent rate. It's kind of strange. Interesting. Are we still can we be done? What I'm are we doing? There. I got to get where? Close. What's happening? Can we do it next week? No. Oh, now I'm we're now we're doing it just to make you mad. I'm going to leave. Out of the way, towel. You don't think I'll leave, do you? You just don't think I'll leave. No one said we didn't think you'd leave, Jim. You don't think I'll leave, Jim. No one said that. I'm going to. Why do, you, why do you think we would not think you would leave? I wish I hammer. Because I don't typically leave. Can we be done? Have the cojones to do it? The <laughs> cojones. <laughs> All right. Let's call it. That, wow. I'm really glad we sat through that last. <laughs> So please, yeah, if you've here been we are. for the last five to ten minutes. And here we are. I apologize. But send we're me an email and I'll give you $10 for freaking wasting your time. I'm not giving anybody anything. Yeah, we know, Ted. <laughs> we'll put you on a budget. <laughs> Teddy, what's on your nose? Is there I no red? scratched it with dry skin last night and I scratched you it. Scratched your nose I with dry I, skin? I, I, I had dry I, skin look, and, and I, I went like this and I like tried to... I peeled it off my hand and then... Uh, Teddy, I thought for the whole time that there was just something on my screen <laughs> until you turned a couple of times. I was like, wait, he's got big red Rudolph nose. Uh, look, guys, I got to get out of the accident scene. Can we? Can we, can yeah, we let me see here. I, I don't like you guys. What are you trying to do? Find that email. We're done. Can I please, know. please. Who We're sent not, it? Joe sent it? Uh, bye guys. Thank you. Click like, subscribe, share. Now we have the show exactly how we wanted it, Teddy. It just finally didn't got rid of it. that long. He's probably still it. Oh, he actually left. He's 109 gone. episodes to get him to quit. Jeez. Finally, we f figured out what it bro what broke. What? What broke his? Oh, he came back. You guys are still here, huh? <laughs> we tried to get you to. We were celebrating you quitting finally. <laughs> let's see. Let's stay on again. See if he comes back. He's not coming on again. I bet she does. I bet she doesn't. Five bucks. No. <laughs> <laughs> Joe would have won five bucks if I took the bet. I couldn't. I couldn't <laughs> stay away. We go. He'll come back. He goes. No, he won't. I go five bucks. He goes. No. And then you pop back. Up. <laughs> All right. Well, seriously, guys, thank you for tuning in. Sorry that this took so long. We really got nothing. Fun, no, I had a lot of fun though. Was fun. I was still stuck with you, so I didn't have as much fun. Not even when I was like this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Talk to you later.